All right, good morning. Uh, obviously, reflecting back upon uh, Friday night's game, obviously very disappointing uh, that we didn't find a way to win that game uh, for various reasons. Uh, but credit to Houston, they got the win, and uh, we didn't play our best football, especially in the fourth quarter when we needed to. Um, our, our guys understand what occurred. We've, we've learned from it. Uh, we, we, there's a lot to learn from the film, and our expectations what we want to continue to grow and, and go from there. And uh, our guys had good eyes and understand what we need to accomplish moving forward and how we got to improve as a team. Uh, but that game is now in the rearview mirror, just like a lot of games. It wins our losses. Uh, we learn from it. We've learned from the good. We learn from the bad, and we find ways to improve. And our guys have that full understanding of what that is. And so now we're, we're our 100% of our focus is turned to East Carolina, as it should be. It's a great conference opponent at a tough environment. They're going to have a, a great crowd there, and we know the type of team East Carolina is. Uh, they're, they're sixth in the country and passing touchdowns. They got a veteran quarterback that's had a lot of success. Uh, they have uh, one of the best red zone defenses in the country. And they're a team that gets after it. So 100% of our focus now is on East Carolina. Uh, excited about having a great week ahead and finding ways to continue to improve and looking forward to getting down to Greenville on Friday night for a Saturday night game. Brian, you mentioned what you guys need to improve. Looking back specifically, what does need to improve? Because obviously you can take a lot from that game and say we need to improve on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if you watch the first three quarters of football, I thought we did some really good things. Um, but even in success, you you know, in those first three quarters, you say, well, this could have been there, this could have been there. And I think just cleaning up the details of our game, right? The obvious ones are, you know, we need to be better at kickoff. And our kickoff coverage unit is not what it needs to be. And it hasn't been much of the season. Um, you know, we've got to continue to clean up the details of our, our hands team for an onside kicks, um, closing out things. You know, we get to a fourth and 12, a lot of missed tackles. We've got to continue to clean up the tackling. Uh, being more detailed in our assignments on offense and make sure we're executing. We're still dropping too many balls. Um, we got to come away with touchdowns in the red zone. That continues to be um, a concern. We got down there plenty of times, but and it's great to make field goals. But we come away with sevens instead of threes. We're a lot better off. So um, there's things throughout, and there always will be. And uh, you know that's the thing is even in wins you're finding say okay, this is the way we got it. And sometimes those get masks and wins, but uh, obviously some eye-opening stuff in this past game, and uh, that's why we're excited to get back on the field on Tuesday. At midseason, is it more concerning, though, because some of those things have come up? You mentioned the drops before, the missed tackles, you talked about kickoff return coverage. Six games in, is it more concerning now that those mistakes are still now coming up in this way? Yeah, and that's why we practice, to try to get those fixed. I mean, and that's my job as a head coach. You know, nobody's happy with us being 4-2 right now. Uh, I'm not happy with our record um, because, you know, we, we can be better, uh, but those are things that have to continue to get fixed, and, and tackling is one of those things you got to improve upon. Um, and kickoff coverage, we're going to continue to look at that. Uh, red zone, do we have different ideas of things that we can do? So all those things we're, we're going to uh, continue to look at, and you know, obviously we have to improve every single week with everything we're doing, you know, and, and, and catching the football. Uh, we, maybe we need more works on the jugs. There's only so many hours on a day, but we'll continue to look at what we're doing with personnel and, and finding ways that we can get better in every area. What's the tone of the coaching staff? Is it more like kind of kicking it in, in, in gear in your rear, or is it more uplifting um, in terms of what you're doing with the players? Yeah, I mean, everybody, is, as you all well know, in the locker room was disappointed, and there should have been hurt and disappointment and frustration, but it does no good to let that linger on. I can come up here and mope around and say, oh, what was it? No. I mean, it's got to be, hey, how do we get better? How do we learn from this, and how do we fix this? Uh, we're always going to coach our guys hard and in the meeting room and understand, hey, this is what we need to do. And, and our guys want to be held accountable to those things, which is great. And, and kind of like I told them, even so, like, I take 1,000% of the blame. Blame me, let's put the 1,000% of the blame on me, but we all got to be responsible and accountable to, hey, this is what occurred on this plane. This is why this has to get done. And our guys are great about that. So it's great teachable moments in a coach me, coach mentality amongst our guys. But I'm telling you, they're, they're excited to get back out on the practice field and find ways to get better. So, you know, there's, there's certain moments that require maybe a little bit more sternness and other times where it's just pure, hey, this is what we have to do and this is how it has to work. And, and that's that fine balance. But our guys have understood that. And, uh, you know, certain individuals respond to certain things. But like I told our team in the way that game occurred, we're going to actually grow closer and we're going to find ways to continue to build upon it, keep our blinders on and move forward in the right direction. So you didn't have to do anything extra to get them out of a funk because the whole city was in a funk uh, to get them motivated with East Carolina with Tulane coming up. 
did you did you have to do more or not? No, then that's the way that our guys are built, the culture of our young men, the character of the group of men in that locker room. Yeah, and rightfully so, right? The, the whole city deserved the right to be in a funk. Uh, I certainly was, but it, it does me no good to come in uh, on Saturday and say, oh, well, they absolutely would have, could have, should have. I got to do a better job. And But our guys are understand the task at hand versus East Carolina. I mean, that's a huge one. And uh, they'll be motivated, they'll be fired up, they'll be ready and excited to have a great week. And you can't get ready for Saturday unless you have a great Monday. They got to take care of their bodies today. They got to be great tomorrow at practice and find ways as we're doing that, preparing for a great opponent. So uh, there'll be no extra motivation or inspiration needed. Um, the, the plan is not lost, right? I mean, the reality of it is we didn't do the things we needed to uh, to finish up a football game, but that doesn't mean that the plan all along was garbage because if you go back and watch you'd say wow you guys did some really good things obviously not good enough and i i get that i'm not oblivious to that but uh, our guys understand the plan of action uh, to continue to do it and how do we find things to improve upon especially the details of what we need to accomplish you talk all year about this being one of the most locked in and bonding groups that you've ever had here yeah is this one of those kind of turning point moments where you find out what you're really made of and what they're made of oh, i know exactly what they're made of uh they're they're made of a great focus and great effort and great energy great grit great character like i just said uh they're a composed team that understands what it takes so i already know what they're made of uh yes this was a small bump in the road or a major bump in the road however you want to look at it but this is not going to deter us from everything we still want all of our goals are still in place like i said we're four and two uh the way the last game occurred yes it absolutely is a terrible feeling but that feeling's got to go away, and we've got 100% focus on East Carolina because we can't let any of that stuff linger, right? The more we have to talk about, the more I got to answer questions, and rightfully so, uh, the more it is there. But guess what? Our guys today, they're not thinking about what occurred last Friday night. They've learned from it, absolutely, but they're focused on East Carolina. What, are there any maybe personnel changes that maybe you guys are exploring? Because obviously there were things where things worked, things didn't work, but is that part of the discussion all, maybe looking at personnel changes, and if so, what maybe would be some of those options if yeah, I think throughout the entire season, we're not doing our job as coaches if we're not looking at personnel and what what guys put us in certain positions to have success. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll have a good feel for that maybe uh, Saturday night and maybe so will East Carolina with some of the personnel changes we may have to make. When you evaluate the offense, the way you guys started the game, how do you replicate that going on to the season? Because, you know, the slow starts may have been a an issue. Yeah, absolutely, Frank. Right, that was what the biggest. We, you know, we, for weeks I've said we have to find ways to f start faster. You know, right? We said, "Wow, we're playing really good fourth quarter football." You know, and obviously this past game we didn't, but we started fast and and we were clicking all centers. So it's just finding that consistency, and that's the word I keep using. You know, and uh, how do we get back to that? And how do we find ways to be able to execute at a high level? down in and down out, right? Not take negative plays, and that's something we still have to improve. I think we're still giving up too many negative plays as an offense. Um, teams are attacking us in a variety of ways, so that's one of those things, and that's part of the game plan, right? Watching the film today, okay, how can we put our guys in the best position in order to have success down in and down out, and that's one of those things that uh, we'll continue to explore. And then you, you know, you used um, Ryan Glover, he had that 28-yard run. Uh, is that something you guys are continuing to explore just to find ways to, to have those those wrinkles? Yeah, look, Ryan Glover's a, a fantastic football player, obviously super intelligent, with great athleticism. I, I told him if he could just pick up his feet, you know, and not let the turf monster get him, uh, maybe a different story. But no, uh, I think we, it, it, we have to make sure that we are putting our guys, whether it's a Ryan Glover or is a Tevin Carter or J.C. French, right? Put variety of different guys. I mean, we got to see the ability that Gabe Rogers has as an athlete and some of the stuff he can do. And, and now all of a sudden, now teams have to prepare for him that way. So we're always looking at different guys, uh, you know, back to Evan's question about different personnel, like where can we put guys in the right spots that now all of a sudden a defense had to plan for it, right? Prior to that game, maybe the team had seen Gabe Rogers throw one time. Now all of a sudden they're saying, holy cow, this guy can run reverses. He can throw the ball. He can do it. Now all of a sudden it puts them. And uh, hopefully, you know, East Carolina is now having to prepare for those variety of things. Do you think having having those 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 wrinkles in your offense, do you think that can kind of be a catalyst in the first half to kind of jumpstart the, the rhythm? Yeah, I think there's always, right, different things that you got to look at, right? It, whether it is a, uh, a gadget play, is it the ability to maybe – you, you do a different thing or reverse or is it a, you know just something that starts it we've also said sometimes like for an offense okay hey just getting tempo right go being able to play faster sometimes gets you into a rhythm we've been here also where 
you know, a guy like Brady White's like, I don't like playing fast. Let's slow this thing down so I can see everything, put us in the perfect position, and let's just, you know, slowly execute at a high level and get us to where we need to. So um, I think it's getting a feel for, you know, where the quarterback is, what we can do, and then also what's the defense going to give us, right? We don't want the defense to dictate the game to us, but sometimes there's some chess matches, right? If they're playing drop eight the whole time, no, then we need to be able to find ways to hand the ball off, and that's how we have to execute the offense. No different, right? If they're playing safeties in the box, then maybe our RPO game has to be there. Um, and if they're going to pressure the heck out of us, how do we get rid of the ball quicker? So um, a lot of that is, hey, this is what the film study shows us, and then now what's this looking like? You know, sometimes by snap five, you're like, oh, this is going to be one of these types of games. Okay, here we go, and, and let's look at our menu of how we can continue to go out there and put the plays uh, on display in order to have success. Talking about touchdowns as opposed to field goals. Yeah. And obviously earlier in the game you settled for some field goals and I could see that. But late in the fourth quarter, now you're battling also the clock. You got the lead. I'm not saying you're conservative, but you're a little bit more than you would be, I think, earlier in the game. What's the it's gotta be a fine line because you say you want the touchdowns. But if you're running the ball, Houston's ready for you to run the ball as well while you're trying to chew up clock. Yeah, absolutely. There is that fine line. Um, and you know, you'd, you'd never sit there and say, well, geez, there's no such thing, obviously, as the end result showed up in the, the game, right? But you felt like, okay, if now all of a sudden you have a three-score lead, a three-touchdown lead, that it'd be very hard for a team to come back. And that doesn't mean you rest on your lowers. You, that, maybe that's a decision, right? Do you go up, uh, you know, so many points in order now that they have to score that many more touchdowns or get back? So you got to be uh, smart at the decision-making, right? We've talked about analytics sometimes, right? Like analytics was telling us to go for it on that fourth and nine where we kicked the field goal, you know, and we kicked the field goal rather than trying to go for it on fourth and nine. Why? Because I think now all of a sudden it becomes a three touchdown game in order for them to get the win and not just say, you know, you, you, you get it missed and now all of a sudden two touchdowns and it's a tie ball game. So I think you play all that into role and effect, but that doesn't mean you want to get too conservative, but you also need to own the football. Obviously we had the, the costly fumble uh, point early in the game. Um, in reality, when it comes down to it, it's just can we execute better? Going back into that, what exactly are those conversations like with the analytics? Obviously, it's a catch-all term, but what are those conversations like with you and your staff using that versus obviously you wanting to be aggressive? Kind of what what are those conversations like with how you decide to use those? Basically? Yeah, I think a lot of it is you go by experience of things that uh, you've seen in the past. You also go by okay. Uh, what's the best situation and, and a lot of it's also gut feel right we're not I'm not one of those guys who just rolls the dice and say well this is what I feel like this is how we're going to do what's going to put us in the right situation and I, I, I do rely on uh, uh, great coaching staff and other people's intelligence to put us in the right situation it goes back to like a lot of those things um, you know when do you go for two what do you do this and, and those conversations people have to their blue in the face about who's right who's wrong um, but I still stand on every decision that was made as far as what we attempted in that game okay now did we execute at the highest level no and so but we always have conversations just like on Wednesday's practice we'll have a two-minute situation right and sometimes those are hey 53 seconds left in the game one timeout down two Right, and then you say, okay, when do you use the timeout? How do you go? How does this look in your practice? And then you watch other games, and I study what other teams are doing, and, and I, uh, you read up and say, okay, well, here's what happens. Right, someone just told me about the Cardinals game, where I guess the quarterback slid too early and then spiked it on a third down. Well, that's a lesson to be learned. No different than we asked someone asked about, hey, the timeout at the end of the game. I believe it was uh, Jeff asked, well, when did you use a timeout at the, you know, with, and I always said, anytime you get under 18 seconds and you got one timeout, at some point you're going to have to use it, whether the guys are downfield getting back rather than a spike, because in a spike, now you're losing a down. And, and, you know, but if you got one timeout, you never want to go into the end of a half or the end of a game with that timeout in your pocket. So you're constantly studying those things. How, how long does it take to get a hurry up field goal unit on? Right? Is, is that something you can do in 12 seconds? Is that so? Just constantly in my brain and, and having a great staff being able to carry on those conversations of okay, what, how much time does this take? What does this look like? Um, and where are we bat out in the game and de deciding factors on what we're going to do. So, with those conversations, like, are those happening like, during your coaches' meeting during the week? Or what are those? If you can take us through those conversations, like what are those like? Is kind of how you guys hash those out a little bit? Yeah, I think every day, right? The, the great thing about practice is those opportunities come up, but we also, throughout spring, throughout training camp, we've actually formulated some of these situational football. And that's the biggest thing is we've got really intelligent players. We've got an intelligent quarterback that understand what situational football is so important. We see teams all the time 
that make blunders of things that like, and I'll show our team in a team meeting, hey, here's, I'll probably show them the Arizona Cardinals deal. We've seen a team last year that spiked the ball on a fourth and four because the guy wasn't aware of it. You just want to make sure you're not ever putting those in your situation. So it, it sometimes they'll come up multiple times in a day. Hey, did you see this happen? It comes up in a practice situation. We'll also plan those out. So like when I'm planning a, a practice plan, so whether it's a two minute situation, a four minute situation, um, you know, how does this come up? You guys will see like uh, in Navy, right? A four minute situation came out where if we got the first down, we were gonna go down, right? Because, hey, this is something that we were able to practice at some point in training camp and continue to remind our guys and um, no different than constant situations. Sometimes on Thursdays, we go through those plans. So uh, a good coaching staff and we've got a great one. Uh, those conversations occurring you know, multiple times a week, and then you're also showing your guys different situations so they can be ready. So does that give you more confidence with being, sorry, man. does that give you more confidance being aggressive? Because you want to be, you said you wanted to be an aggressive unit, but does that kind of, those discussions, does that make it more easy to be the aggressive unit to want to be whether it's going for it on fourth down or the two point conversion? Uh, so I don't think that two point conversion at the one I assume you're I mean, talking about. I mean, yeah, general. I think what it does, I think having an intelligent football team. Right and one that you feel like you're doing everything in your power to prepare. Obviously, you can never prepare enough, and there's things that occur. But I think having an intelligent football team that understands situational football, yes, it gives us great confidence in trying to accomplish the things we want to accomplish. Right. And especially having, right, if you had said, Ryan, last year with an 18-year-old true freshman quarterback, well, maybe as you couldn't rely on much as him. Like, you're, maybe we're yelling at the sideline, no, you got to do this and do that. But now our guys understand it. It's amazing to even hear our guys say, hey, Coach, in this situation, have you thought? And it, it, I love it because that means they're starting to think like us. And uh, you know, sometimes that comes with time and experience. Uh, but yeah, it, Evan, it absolutely you get a little bit more confidence when the guys are starting to say, "Okay, hey, in this situation, can we do this?" It's, you know, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of, um, and I was able to show our guys. Okay, so the Cotton Bowl game right before half, and I know that's I'm just throwing this thing out there, right? Right before a half, that we end up actually having. We thought the clock was rolling, right? We were going to call a timeout. Instead, we had still had seven seconds. So we took the ball and threw a quick out, get it down to two seconds, kick the field goal right before half. No different if you think about the Navy game, right? We knew that it, right before half, right, there was about, it was a third down, whatever, and we were in field goal range. So instead of having to kick the ball back off, we just threw the ball at a receiver, went out of bounds, burned some clock, learned that from Tom Brady. Right, and then go and kick the field goal so there's no time so you're not having to kick off. So it's just things, but the quarterback was already thinking, hey, this is something that we can do to put ourselves in that right situation. What do you think of the way that Seth is using his legs this year? Is that a dimension to the offense that maybe you guys didn't anticipate going into the season? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, as you know, some are designed quarterback runs. Some are uh, designed zone read concepts, right? So much of this offense is based off of the premise of, we call it all triple option, right? I can read the end. If it's not there, I'm going to pull it. And if, if they're coming down to play me as a quarterback, then I can spit it out there. So the old triple option offense is what the zone read, in essence, is built off of. Um, you know, some of our draw games, some of that stuff, uh, it's built in that with the ability to run. Now, what Seth has been able to do is if the pocket's not there, he's trusting his legs, his physical ability to be able to now find ways. And so that is an added dimension. It is, it's certainly now teams are having to account for him. You know, I, I'd always say this, you know, you know I always bust Brady's chops about no one ever assumed we had an athletic quarterback here for four or five years. And now all of a sudden, people are going to start to account for Seth and say, wow, he has the ability to do some of those things. So um, it, it gives you, hey, if it's not there, Bud, make sure you're taking, you know, making smart decisions. You know, sometimes he may slide too early. Uh, sometimes he dives forward and takes unnecessary hits. But we're just constantly making sure that he is um, and understand how to protect himself, but also get the necessary yardage. And he, he, he's a veteran enough now that if the pocket breaks down, step up, two hands on the ball, and, and it has been a nice added dimension. Do we want him running all over the field? Does this mean we're going to start running all these quarterback runs? Probably not as much, but uh, he certainly is capable. Is that something you guys are talking about? Because I know it's not Friday night, it seemed like the ratio of him diving head first versus sliding was a little more skewed towards diving head first. That's something that concerns you? Well, so we talk about it, right? If he dives head first and the defender is five yards away from him, he's probably going to get three yards on that dive. As soon as you go to actually slide, and this is a big point of emphasis in college football, even so in the NFL. So if I'm the quarterback and I go to slide and, I'm, and the defender is five yards away from me and I go to slide, they're going to actually mark me down where I even start my slide. So him going head first, if you feel like he can do it protective, that's three extra yards every time. Obviously, we don't want any shoulder issues or anything like that or unnecessary shots. 
but now they're rolling those slides. So we've even seen some like, no, it's a bad spot, but they always spot it where he initially slides. So we're leaving a lot of that to his discretion to protect himself. Um, he knows some of those things. I, I even bust his chops and obviously uh, he knows us just as well, right? We did have that one quarterback draw design on a, a third and seven and he goes and gets the first down. Just keep running. You may run yourself into the end zone and that's, that's you know, ultimately that's on me. But like, you know, I was even saying, man, just trust your speed. You have in the athleticism now to get where you need to get to. Well, you alluded to it already a little bit ago, but um, I mean, last time you guys off the game, you won four straight. What are you seeing from, from your guys, specifically your veterans, that as a coach is allowing you to believe that if they can get back on the saddle, no problem? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's that confidence that I even told you guys, not cockiness, even preseason. Like, these guys believe, and that's, that's what gives me – that's why I'm not – this the body language it's okay we got a great group of men a great group of leaders those veterans they're like oh no 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 what occurred that's not us right like that's not that's not good enough what happened that's not good enough and they hold themselves to the highest standards which i love it doesn't need to be you know <laughs> they understand hey these are expectations these are our standards for ourselves I don't, we don't you know reality they've been great like whatever's going on in the outside world outside of like all that matters is their own opinions of themselves, and they got full belief in that we're able to do things, right? Like I said, it, four and one, now we're four and two, right? Had we been five and one, so be it. That would have been great. But we can't do anything about that at that time other than learn from that and move on. So our guys are saying, okay, the record is what it is, but we still have everything we want in front of us. So one game at a time approach. And in fact, we've even broken down, not just East Carolina. Let's, let's, I told our guys, let's have the best Monday we've ever had get to study hardly, hydrate, take care of our bodies, watch some film. That way, then let's go have the best Tuesday we have. And so if we're doing that, that, that narrow-minded focus on one day at a time, then one week at a time, we'll get to where we know it. But those vets, those leaders have been awesome. They've been like, okay, all right, what do we need to do continue to improve? Uh, how do we focus on ourselves to get better? And then, you know, we'll be ready for our opponent. Ryan, last thing for me. Uh, Quindo didn't play in the fourth quarter on, that last, on those last drives. What's his status? Any update on Gamble? Saw so Barnett was on crutches. What's his update? And Ladarian Paul too. Yep. So uh, let's see. I'll go backwards just so I can remember. Uh, Ladarian Paul is day to day. Uh, uh, Julian will still be out uh, for a little bit longer. Um, Jonah Gamble is day to day, and then um, so will Quindell Johnson be day to day. With Gamble being day to day, it's been two weeks. Is it kind of one of those injuries where it's kind of just tricky because it's it's unpredictable, or what's what's well, I'll just see how he feels, right? And then what the medical staff determines is best for him and safe for him to get back on the field. And then, and then with Quindell, was there any concern at all? Because obviously, you know, he didn't play in that fourth quarter. So is there any concern about just, you know, where he is or is it again just dead? Yeah, same deal, right? Uh, leave it to the, the medical experts to feel like when it is best for him to go. And if, if he can get back on the field in a, in a safe manner, whether that's tomorrow, uh, we'll do so. But, you know, it. Uh, as you guys well know, that our guys are going to do everything in their power to get back on the field as soon as possible. Well, how would you evaluate um, the, the O line play on Friday, especially with you know Myers being back? Yeah, it was good to have Austin back. Obviously, you know what I appreciate about the young man is he knows that there's still a lot to clean up, and um, it, it, there's some good things there. Uh, the strain and the fight was there from the offensive line. Uh, Still too many negative plays. And that's one of those things you go back and watch it and you said, okay, they did some better things the offensive line did, but let's, let's do it at a consistent. And that's kind of going back to the whole offense, right? Whether it's drop passes, route concepts, throws, blocking, and the offensive line's just got to be more consistent. That's what the one thing you want from an O-line. So um, it, it's one of those areas that they know they got to improve. Um, they've got high expectations for themselves. So. Uh, but having Austin at, at vet back in there uh, certainly helps. And, you know, if Jonah gets back in there, but those guys, um, you know, Mac Pounders will be ready, available. Braxton Alford has continued to fight and, and do things at a high level. But the rest of those guys understand that we've got to continue to, to improve and uh, not exactly where we need to be right now. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.